Welcome back to the Raven Magic Podcast. This podcast is a safe, sacred container for us to integrate the shadow together, giving it life, allowing it to be seen and heard. Join me, Raven Allison, as I interview a wide variety of guests dedicated to helping you explore the shadow safely. I invite you to set a sacred ritual space. Allow the medicine of the ravens into your experience. Grab your book of shadows and a pen and trust that you're not alone facing the depths of the collective shadow and how it interweaves into your own unique story. I hope you enjoy this episode and that it brings more consciousness into your life. to the Raven Magic Podcast. It's Raven and I'm flying solo today. Um, I am going to be doing another episode with Mitchell. Thank you so much for the just the overwhelming response to us sharing uh, about the psych ward and our mental health in the last episode. I felt really good for both of us to get it out there and yeah, if you haven't listened to the episode, I highly recommend listening to it. It's just really authentic. And uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, we're going to be recording another episode this week. And we'll have part two of that series coming at you the following week. And Teresa Edge and I are going to be doing more on dark goddesses. But today I did kind of want to, I felt really called in sitting here with my altar in the morning. Um in my devotional practice to Medusa, who I have been working with since April of this year, but just at the autumn equinox for me, uh, the spring equinox, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, I, um, I devoted my path to her at this time and took a vow of chastity for those that listened to my young episode. And so I just really wanted to share a bit about working with Medusa, all of you, as a form of shadow integration. She's definitely a little, you know, she's definitely been quite illuminating for me. And I, I know everyone's path is different, so I always say trust who's coming forward. So if it feels aligned and you're resonating with this, then, you know, set a sacred space, put a... You know, if you're doing a ceremonial tea, put a tea out for her and invite her into the, the space. That's what that's what I did when I first met her. And I uh, and if someone else is coming through, then you've got to follow that. But I do really love working with dark goddesses for shadow work. And I feel that that's because it really does allow it to get out of the mind and into the felt sense into that high priestess energy, into the intuitive body, the felt wisdom, the connection, and then the emotional response that really shows you how much of the myth you're taking on or what parts of your life you're um, relating. So for those that don't know uh, Medusa at all, she is from Greek mythology. And she was one of the three Gorgon sisters, and she is a sea goddess. She was born of the sea, and she was, um, you know, this beautiful, beautiful human woman that devoted herself um, also with a vow of chastity to the Greek goddess Athena, who is the god of war and wisdom. And Athena was born, uh, for those that don't know, out of Zeus's head. So it's just very interesting mythology. I'm not going to go too deep into it. 
But if, if any of this is, is kind of having that soul or heart resonance, I really highly recommend you, you work with who's pulling you. So Medusa was this beautiful woman, <clears throat> excuse me, that devoted herself, was a priestess of Athena. And, you know, long story short, the original myth goes where Poseidon, so Poseidon is brother of Hades, god of the underworld, and Zeus, Sky Man. <laughs> I just call him Sky Man. Um, but yeah, so Hades, or sorry, um, Poseidon is um, the god of the sea. And so, you know, a lot of people would come to Athena's temple um, just to see Medusa. Like, I just kind of want to paint you this picture, especially of the version that I've worked with. So take it or leave it. I've watched videos on how people articulate Medusa's energy, but in her, I want to say pure form, though pure I'll use loosely, you know, picture this beautiful radiance of grace and devotion in the feminine to the feminine um and you know where there isn't that energy of oh look at me but everybody's looking right we all know those beautiful women right where it's kind of just they catch your attention they they draw you in and it's not in a way that feels like it's a siren or some kind of them fatal it's just in their beautiful ability to embody the essence of grace and that's really how i perceive the energy of medusa in her original form and poseidon just could not control his lust and for those that don't know greek mythology and the history athena and poseidon uh, really had it out they had kind of like a rivalry going so um, long story short, Poseidon rapes uh, Medusa on the temple, like on a the Athena's temple. And there's different versions of this, but essentially Athena ends up getting pissed off and cursing Medusa. So in some stories, she gets her hair, her beautiful golden hair, turned to snakes. In some stories, she becomes completely hideous. Um, in, in ancient drawings, there's been over 60 renditions of her face alone, some of which had beards, tusks. Um, it really depends. And then became like her sister's the serpent woman. So she had a body of a, of a snake. And in the patriarchal version, you know, Athena's mad. Romans wrote this version over top of Greek mythology and that's why she does it and then in other versions that i've heard it's that athena was doing this to protect medusa and give her kind of this you know means of protecting herself against men because now in her transformed form <clears throat> excuse me i like i'm so think she can now turn men to stone so nobody can really look at her if a guy looks at her, he turns to stone. So this is kind of her new, her new vibe. So it's kind of the classic tale of victim turned villain, victim shaming, and it's 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 kind of like a beauty and a monster, because um, a lot of people paint Medusa as a femme fatale, which just means fatal woman. So yes, she is, but in my workings with her. Obviously, everyone's going to be different, but she's not like it's not like she's wielding her sexuality to lure people in. All the heroes and men that are coming to her are are trying to kill her, right? And then it's more of a self defense. So I don't, I just don't really get that that vibe from her at all, which is why I've really enjoyed working with her. So another part of the myth is the myth of Perseus, where later Athena gives him the mirror shield. Katie gives him the invisibility cloak. And I think her, Hermes, like, I forget what Hermes gives them, but eventually Perseus just, like, beheads Medusa, right? And Pegasus is born, and I forget the other person that comes out of her head, but she gets two kids out of that. 
And um, yeah, so then Athena takes Medusa's head and puts it on her shield. So I, I don't like... I this is how I'm kind of perceiving the mythic lens so I'm gonna share that first it might be a little bit too heavy but Medusa is helping me affix my feminine head back on my body <laughs> legit I love working with her for that so if you're kind of caught in the analyst of your own self if you're like like me where you're digging you're always doing shadow work you're always trying to heal you're always trying to figure out what's going on then Medusa can actually be quite healing because it can really help you like affix that will your throat like back together and get this conduit grounded in the body. She's also connected to snake medicine, which is such a potent medicine on all levels. Um, such a transformation vehicle and linked to the element of fire. And I am really enjoying the integration she is helping me with aging um tr and beauty and just like a transformational vehicle so i'm really loving that but one thing that i couldn't help but notice in the mythology side of it was that and it was kind of like more personal where i was like wow i really see this in me but when in the past i was really projecting my inner masculine outside of me and I was kind of like Athena, you know what I mean? Like using my dark shadow anima in the head of Medusa as like a wall of like, get away from me. I turn you all to stone. Um, so working with Medusa for me has actually been really healing because it's almost like, well, it is kind of similar as an archetypal vehicle, like Persephone, a dark anima figure, right? So been very healing i also have uh have had sexual assault and rape in my life so it's highly relatable for me in that though i have done a lot of womb work and things like that so it it doesn't necessarily hit me there i feel like for the me the the most part of the myth that i was personally taking on how do i know that i was personally taking on i i was reacting like if you start reacting when you're working with somebody and you want to like protect them or you're like, ah, like, what are they doing? Like that is a clear indication that you might be personally attached or reenacting the myth, right? Or have something in your unconscious that might need to be, you know, you might need to try and get to know. So for me, I think what I didn't like, and I understand it, but I didn't like that she was being painted more like a siren femme fatale like luring her and like you know and then being like this sexy kind of creature which i guess could be viewed as empowered but for the way that it was hitting me which is why i always recommend like people just working with deities on in their own way it 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 felt like people were missing the point and in all the art I tried to find, it was really hard for me to find something that resonated with the energy and the way that she was being depicted. Even right down to like the Athena stuff, like I just did not get that. Like she felt like such a beautiful sister energy, feels very like, I don't know, like mother, like split mother, like just it's been really powerful for me to work with her. Uh, she's really teaching me the power of like not hating men or it's not about not wanting a man. It's about the choice of the goddess. Like I'm, I'm kind of working with her that way. She also really helped me like, you know, behead kind of like the psychoanalyst in me. And she also helped me turn my satyr like devil man to stone. <laughs> and... The trauma that I'm actually integrating with this myth is it's kind of personal for me to share because it's really young. So I, I'm going to have to breathe and feel how much I want to share about this. <sighs> Let's just say that it's a really young trauma that I'm integrating. It happened at five. It was a gender clusterfuck in my mind. It was involved sexual abuse but also like but by a, 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 another five-year-old so very confusing 
um, in the mind. And yeah, so she's kind of really, it's, it's, there's no way that I could explain the event and then explain it and relate it logically to the mythology. So I'm not going to try and do that. And it does feel right to keep that event private to just those that know me. But Medusa is like really, really helping me just kind of just, I think, just embrace my feminine power. And she's really showing me where I was afraid at a core of my inner masculinity. And that I was also equally terrified of my of the full channeling of my divine femininity. And so it, it feels like very pivotal work that I'm doing right now. And it's in, and that trauma that I experienced is actually also linked intergenerationally through both family lines. So my mom is actually like kind of working her own piece of it consciously and like other stuff. So it's it's been really, really, it's been really beautiful. And yeah, she's just like, she feels very cleansing to me. She wanted, like I asked what she wanted in my devotion and she just said strength, vitality, and grace, ownership of the divine feminine powers within and the courage to embrace transformational forces. Um, and then for me, she feels really linked to the tree willow because I do a lot of work with trees and tree medicine and tree magic. So I've been kind of linking her to the willow. And then because she's a sea goddess and then we have that kind of like God energy raping. So like if we bring just Poseidon and that down to like, like a baseline metaphor, I just feel like, wow, the collective waterways have that imbalance in them, especially because I work with the myrrh and, you know, the archetypal ocean as our subconscious so I was really feeling that I was like yeah and that's another thing that I don't feel ashamed to say because this is why I for those that don't know I do um I do and have in the past and I'm starting them again I do open erotic kink sharing circles uh the goal is the goal is um shadow integration or self-awareness and the reason for that is because if you take something like the myth of medusa yes especially as somebody that has been traumatized sexually you know you can be like okay rape is bad but really when i get really clear with myself i really like there i have had to face that there is a part of me that really loves and gets turned on when her boundaries are being pushed by a man. Um, there's a part of me that really likes getting tied up. You know what I mean? And, and, and giving away my control. There is a part of me that, you know, really, really likes that kind of I, the word deceptive comes up. The word kind of deceptive energy comes up. And, you know, to say it, it's like, oh, God, Raven, what are you doing? Um, but it, it's because I brought it into such conscious awareness. So Medusa can help with that. I'm not saying that she liked being raped by Poseidon, but her energy has been so neutral around the whole thing. It's, it's quite admirable. And at a core, it's, it's like, okay that we like that where it gets dangerous or confusing is because a lot of times, like, especially if you have young sexual trauma as a child, that's where it does get very confusing in the mind is that it, it feels like you, so your body will be feeling pleasure while you're having a trauma that is like non-consensual. Right. So that can get kind of confusing. So that's why the erotic kink sharings and talking about it openly on the surface outside of the dungeon is like really important to me because it can add a layer to your shadow integration when you really can safely explore those aspects of yourself outside of a sexual arena, inside an intimate relationship, of course, but the BDSM community in general, like it's a real, it's a real edge. And all I mean by that is like, you know, if you're interested in that, Miss LX, she does conscious kink awareness and, and she can help you get more conscious about it. But a lot of, it's a real slippery slope because trauma 
and then toxic like power dynamics are kind of riddled in that and then in our media and society and how they paint that they paint it like really like they kind of glamorize um abuse and that's not what it's like in a safe consensual relationship in those things and i really want to actually i'm I don't know if she'll do it and I haven't asked, but one day I would really like to interview Miss LX because of that. I, I would really love to talk more about this, but I don't want to do that on this episode. I know I always like travel off, but it's because when you're doing your conscious shadow integration and working with, you know, big myths like this or deities, like it can stir up a lot of different feelings and a lot of different layers and a lot of different things and everything's interconnected and has a bigger theme especially with archetypes, right? Because then we're in the collective unconscious. So I kind of just wanted to disclose that because it was just like a real pattern that I was aware of, but I was having a hard time uh, integrating it. And that's why this vow of chastity to Medusa was really helpful because um, what was happening with a connection in my life was that like that's what would happen like I would be like speaking out of both sides of my mouth I'd be like I don't want to make out anymore like blah 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 and then I'd be like okay like yeah let's do it <laughs> you know it felt really teenager like it felt like I was just like oh no please don't touch me but yes do so so it was really it was challenging um and then I didn't take the vow because of this, but when I had the vow outside of external forces, it kind of reminded me like, okay, let's get our power back. And then that's when I got real clarity on like, oh, okay, like maybe this is like Poseidon at a core and that's okay. Um, you know, and then it's, and then this trauma of my own surfaced into my consciousness and it was young as fuck. So the younger trauma is the more autonomous and the more reactionary. And then I also have something that I, that's kind of linked to it. That's pre-language. So in pre-language stuff, you can't think if the mind tries to grasp on and give it a definition or a thing, it just will, you can't. So just feeling, and that's my mantra that Medusa gave me as well. You can't think yourself through this. You've got to feel. And she's been helping me really feel into that serpent power, into the divine feminine, into, you know, the woman that is taught that, you know, if, if you're ugly, men will leave you alone, right? Like how many people can relate to that? And, you know, it's just like the classic, like when you look at the myth outside, it's like, oh, you're beautiful. A man wants you. It's your fault okay, we're punishing you. It's like, wow, this is really resonant in our society. But she's been really, really activating and she feels like the very waters of earth itself. And yeah, I, I, I'm just looking at my notes and it does say the kink. Like I, I had this kind of like unconscious kink like where my energy was up and I do feel like it was in Poseidon and, and I was blind to it because I was so fixated on Hades and Persephone that I didn't see that I was really just playing out Poseidon. <clears throat> so it was quite interesting. And that's why it's important to find out what myth. Oh yeah. So in simul it simultaneously while I'm working with Medusa, I've been, kind of asking myself questions of like, what does my inner masculine look and feel like? And, you know, kind of identifying like my own inner father energy. The and the own like, I, I yeah, she's really just helping me like integrate the full feminine. And then at the simultaneously my animus. It's, it's been so cool. Like, I just feel like I'm releasing so much and advancing with her. And she always tells me like, it's not about like, I'll be like, okay, like, I don't want to be with any men and this and that, you know? And she's like, no, it's not about like pushing the man away like Athena or, you know, saying that you don't want a man. It's just about like the choice of yourself and the goddess. And that feels like really, really powerful, you know? I, it's, it's, she's been so, 
so powerful. And I would say like my overarching energy of working with her is like a sister. I, I feel like I want to hold her hands. I feel like I just want to like cry with her, gaze into her eyes. Um, I've been really inspired to try and get to know the part of her or the side of her prior to her transformation in that more maiden energy and this pure kind of grace energy. Um, and then as a side note, just cause I did like try to find more information on Medusa, a lot of people were speaking about her and how they perceived her completely differently, which was interesting cause it gave me like different perspectives to contemplate and feel into. And yeah, one person took like where I'm really admiring this devotion because I've never been like that. I've never been devoted to the goddess in this way. I've never been devoted to my own feminine in this way. I've always worshipped the man like unconsciously, right? And the one video I watched, they were kind of perceiving where it was like, no, you have to be the goddess. Like, you know, she's ruthless. Like, she'll make you embody your power. And, you know, the lesson there was like, don't worship somebody outside of you because they're just going to like turn against you or not have you in your power. And I was like, oh, okay, like I can see that. Like I can see that perspective and that point of view. And that is just not how I'm perceiving her. I actually feel like that she was still devoted to Athena is like kind of, <sighs> I don't want to say admirable, but softening comes to mind it's it's like this she's teaching me the art of surrender and I really need that and she's also helping me regrow my hair with a vengeance so I really really like that about her <laughs> she helped me realize that I was playing the role of the anima um yeah she just took it to a whole other level i think i just she took me to a whole other level of self-awareness of power of consciousness and i hope and encourage people to work with her if you want like i hate doing this but I, i'm trying hard to be the person that people need me to be instead of telling you hey, I want you to just receive me and do this yourself. I know a lot of you were like, please just tell me how. So get, you know, items that are snake, fire, hagstone. I'm using hagstone, willow. I've got shells. I've got my snake rattle pod. I have this whole altar with like a, the dark goddess and I light a candle with this kind of snake like golden bangle like on it every morning and I've been this is the first time I've worked with a deity every morning every day um I just kind of have talks with her I just sit and reflect with her and for those that you know want to call that active imagination by all means you can but it's been really, really powerful. And it's been really, really helpful for me. And that's why I like working with dark goddesses because they really do hold you in trauma in the womb because they all have it. They all have it. And it helps you kind of like take the weight off because then you kind of realize the collective point that this trauma and story originated and it allows you to just kind of honor your part in it. And a lot of people have said that for survivor, the survivors of sexual assault and stuff, she can be really helpful. And I would say that from my experience of working with her, I have felt nothing but compassion, um, safe with her, you know, like she's taught me more about harnessing my anger and stuff than, you know, expressing it wildly and without direction. And she's really helped me honor that transformations from a young, beautiful vessel can sometimes be advantageous and for your best interest 
and that beauty is never skin deep. And that's one energy that I think I'll leave you with if you're interested in working with Medusa is that this is why I actually kind of re did react to how she's being depicted. Because I feel like if we're not going to depict who she was in her original form, then we really don't get to see who she is in her present form clearly. And that's because she's not a monster. She was just defending herself. And she really did remain true at her core to who she was before. Just the outside appearance changed. And that is really powerful medicine. So thanks for listening to my journey with Medusa. Um, I'm going to keep working with her and revisit my vow of chastity at the winter solstice because I have a feeling that it might need to change. But if not, I'll continue again until the spring. But I'm sending everybody all the love. And I really, really highly recommend that you work with a deity because deities ground egomania better than any other thing. So in a world that wants to embody the god and goddess, you know, why not get to know them outside of yourself? I'll see you all next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Raven Magic Podcast. If you would like to support me, Raven Allison, and this podcast, please consider donating to the PayPal link provided in the description of each episode. All proceeds are fed back into this project dedicated to helping make conscious shadow integration more widely accessible. Another way that you can give back to this project and yourself is if you're somebody that needs help, that doesn't have anywhere to explore these darker aspects, these unconscious aspects of the self, I have a patron community dedicated to empowering you psychoshamanically with prompts, playbacks, lectures, and classes, as well as community of people just like yourself. It's open pledge and fully accessible, starting as low as a dollar per month. I hope to see you there and thank you for exploring your unconscious self.